Steve Aimable, six win streak, TKOs and KOs, comes off the back of a loss. That was a decision to Steve Martin in February 2016. Bit ring rusty, you said he'd been out of play for a while. Yeah, 19 months he's been out of action, uh, he picked up uh, pretty serious injury, he's recovered now. As you say, he's coming off that loss to Stephen Martin. That was a, uh, a British title as well that he lost. So uh, he'd only won it in the previous fight. I knew he was very, uh, very intent on making that first defense. It didn't go to plan. So there's a lot at stake here for Steve Amable. Well, Morton comes off a two loss streak. Great strike game. We know that he's very good in the upright, but it goes to the ground. Brad. What do you think is going to work out here and play out if this does go, as it has done, straight to the mat and we see a ground game? Well, in, in the stand, uh, first of all, Chase is more the, uh, you know, tactician where uh, Steve Amble throws more of the power shots. But on, on, on the floor, I think Steve has the advantage. Even though um, Chase has been doing a lot of BJJ at Richmond Fitness, um, you know, doing a lot of gi work, but... But, um, yeah, I, I, I can see this not being the best position for Chase at this moment. I, I, I'd like to see him try and get back to the feet. It's a bit harder now it's in a ring, though, and not have a cage. Absolutely, and this is the notable difference here. We are, in effect, if you like, going back to the old days of pride. Absolutely. You know, I, we, we don't have the solid cage for the fighters to put their back on, so it's going to make it all that little bit more difficult for Chase Bond to get back to his feet. Steve Amable fighting out of BKK. They're well known for their heavy top games and their pressure fighting. That's exactly what we're seeing, seeing from Amable early on. You've got to watch the yeah, sweep there from sweep. Chase Morton. He steps straight into mount. Well, I have to say, I saw Morton working very hard on escape routes with his trainer just in the warm-up and uh, particularly working how to escape guillotines, how to escape triangles, and it looks like that's paying off because he's manoeuvred very nicely here. Brad? That's a very good uh, very, very good reversal, but unfortunately he's getting put on his back again there. I'd like to see him try and use that to get back to his feet, where he, obviously I, I believe he has a bit more of an advantage. Well, the pace settled down and evening out. Someone looking for advantage here. Morton trying to gain some kind of purchase, but it's come to the upright, and this is probably where Chase Morton is most comfortable. Yeah, great work from Chase Morton there. It's always uh, a case of stepping into the lines then when you're playing that ground game with BKK, guys. You look in Steve Amable's corner, he's got Jack Mason, he's got John Maguire, both men known for those pressure top games. Maguire obviously <laughs> known for his Kimura, so again, that's something else in Chase Morton's mind. He's got so much to think of it on the ground. You've got to believe this is where he wants it. He needs now to fish in, pull his underhooks, turn his man off the ropes and get that offense going. Already we see Steve Amable closing the distance, keeping it tight, keeping it messy. That's where he's going to win this fight. Absolutely, and Morton has the height advantage here. Very slight, but enough to make Amable have to work to get on the inside. We're seeing the knees come into play now from the clinch. Referee Mark Goddard separating, so all to play for. Oh, beautiful combination there. Nice little left uppercut going in, a right hand behind it. This is definitely Chase's game on the outside. He wants to keep him outside, he wants to keep him at the and the end of his punches and kicks. Good, solid hands there we're seeing from Morton, keeping the distance, keeping the range, keeping Aimable outside, and punishing him for just hanging on a little bit too long, trying to get in on the inside, but up goes the high kick, and now we're seeing some fluidity from Morton. Oh, that shot rock, Steve Aimable, a knee behind it, and he counters with a big takedown. Exactly what I thought he would do, as soon as the pressure gets a bit too much, and Chase gets a bit too aggressive, and Keller's with his strikes, I knew there was going to be a double leg there. Well, absolutely. Amable takes his man down, really negates all that punishment he was receiving from the perpendicular. Now we're down on the mat, and this is where the locks start to be picked. Exactly. You know, Bika Gay have a very good ground game here, and obviously, I do believe that. I've seen a few of Steve Annabelle's fights. He does like ground and pound and elbows um, from on top. You know, he's trying to keep here on top of strong, strong base here. Well, that's what won him the title. You know, it was that heavy top game, the short elbows and the stay relentless ground and pound. Guys, you want to stay there, he really working. does have the kind of stamina that means he can do this for three rounds. He can do it for five if needs be. That's what won him the British title. He's going to look to replicate that performance here. Going to watch the guard, though, of Chase Morton slowly creeping up as he looks to switch those hips out. We've seen him sweep already. We may see him sweep again. 
He's, let, he's letting Chase control his posture a bit too much here. And he needs to try and break the posture so he can get some decent ground and pounding. At the moment, uh, he's keeping his head a bit too far down and he's got to be careful of the triangles and the arm bars. Well, exposing himself by just keeping so low in that guard. And there's the 10 second clap at. So, unless we see something dynamic happen now, we're on the bell. What a great opening wow. And neither of these boys has come to play here. You can Absolutely see the damage. Not. You can see the damage on Chase's face already with that couple of elbows from the top game from Steve, you know. It has a very good strong game. So yeah, we'll take a look at the action from that first round now here with the replays. Aimable there, looking for the trip. Snakes the leg down, puts his man back on the mat in his own corner as well, crucially. He's got Jack Mason, John Maguire there giving instruction. Here we see the sweep though that took place earlier in the round and a real uh, power over technique sweep there. Well, it's the rangy physique of Morton. Whenever he's compromised, the legs are always wild and dangling. And that always means that there's a possibility something very, very serious could happen. And so Aimable really just had no choice but to keep low down in that guard try to keep under the shots that could have come from Morton for some good, good headshots there. But all in all, good round for both fighters. We go to two of three. We'll see how this pans out. Referee Mark Goddard about to get the second round underway. Some nice striking from Chase Morton, the first. Personally, I'd give it to Steve Amable on my scorecard. Whoever's doing the music, get a message to him. So fucking turn it off. Referee Mark Goddard just momentarily halting the action there. And we're back underway in this second round. Nice side kick there from Chase Morton to open things up. But already Steve Amable's closing the distance. This seems to be the problem for Chase inside it's inside the ring. You know, he wants to be a bit more elusive striker on the outside. And Steve Amable's doing the right thing by coming forward, being very aggressive and not giving Chase the room to work. Oh, uh, just uh, to clarify our position here, Chase Morton has uh, got the uh, black gloves on, fighting out of the black corner, and uh, aimable with the white gloves. Uh, we had a little technical hitch at the beginning of this, so whilst the fighters were being introduced, we just couldn't give you that information. But now on the mat, and uh, really starting to work the ground game here. It's yeah, so Aimable happy to down. sit in this position. He's in that half guard position. He's he's probably not even going to look to pass here. He can grind away. He can drop the elbow on the left hand side. Maybe he does look to slide through to side control. We've got John McGuire in the corner there. I'm sure he's been passing on some of those Kimura related tricks. We all know that John McGuire has a really mean Kimura as well. Referee Mark Goddard now starting to get a little bit impatient. Impatient. He wants to see some action. And uh, not for the want of trying these two, but uh, they need to get busy. Chase is looking for that sweep again. Wasn't successful this time. Uh, I think Steve's got a very good top pressure. And it's just got to watch out for the long legs of Chase with the triangles and arm bars and oh, the up kicks that we just saw there. there. Really caught his man on the chin with that one. And Aimable's got to be careful when he's hanging around in that danger zone. It's not something we see often, but when they do land flush, they can do a heck of a lot of damage. Chase was doing a good job there, using the underhook to try and get back to his feet, but Steve Amable just kind of just man-beasted him down, and, and he's showing that he's had no problems with this weight class. Absolutely not. We thought he may be the slightly smaller man coming in. Doesn't look to be that way at all. He's carrying a lot of that weight in terms of muscle in his upper body, and he's really putting it on Chase Morton here. Well, we were in a little bit of danger territory there. We saw a little bit of a guillotine go on. Morton, well, not troubled by it, but there's a cut over one of the eyes of Chase Morton and a little bit of blood that's obscuring his vision. But uh, the action continues where just two minutes left in this round, and that was a body slam as they hit the mat. Unbelievable lift and slam down. We heard it as he hit the canvas there. That was a great takedown by by Steve, and he's been doing that all night. As soon as Chase gets him a little bit too close, he gets that locked on the double and just sends his man to the canvas. Well, every time we've seen Chase Morton get off a nice, clean combination of strikes, Aimable's been able to change levels. That's really been the story of this fight so far for me. Aimable looking to pull that right leg through the guard now and establish a slightly more dominant position. Morton doing a good job of just locking his man up here. 
Well, aimable on top here, and you know, there's an old expression, you can only go to the well so many times. Those are big slam downs that Morton's been receiving. And look at this now, it's taken some of the gas out of the tank, as aimable now, controlling from the top, and he's got a beautiful chance here to get into submission territory. Will he be able to hold it? He stepped over to the other side there, did everything right on that arm triangle, but Chase Morton just doggedly defended, and he's still in the fight. I think the blood and the sweat paid a little factor in that one, you know, he managed just to slip out. Well, doggedly defended is just a beautiful description of what Morton has done here up until now. And as I say, I saw that in the warm-up, in the changing room. Everything that Morton was doing with his trainer was... I see work, guys. You want to stay there? You have to do something, please. Well, we've seen that come into play here. Mark Goddard having another word with them. Um, well, you thought that the first round was aimables, but uh, I don't know. Morton, I thought, had some good strikes. Brad. Yeah, this is it's been a, this has been a grueling test for Chase, you know, uh, you know, but he's doing really well in these scrambles. He, uh, I think he's not out the fight. Morton takes the top position there, one for Hammerfist to the back of the head. Aimable looked like he was going to go for that arm triangle again, but it's Morton trying to sprawl, sprawl out here. Aimable takes his man back into the corner. Morton trying to fish out a standing guillotine here, perhaps. He's going to end up giving a takedown up. Yeah, knew it. Well, down he goes again, and that body slam ricochets around the room, He's as we can feel it right over here in the commentary table. And, you know, all on the base of the spine, all heavily landed. I mean, this is really good work from Steve Amable. Absolutely, and you saw the way he positioned his man on the way down there, just prevented him being caught in that guillotine. Landed in a nice side control. Allows him to keep a lot of the pressure on the top of the upper body and really pin Morton down for those final few seconds. And of course, it must look great in the eyes of the judges. Well, at the end of two, there's one more to go. I know that Brad Wharton has got, uh, well, Steve Aimable ahead. Probably after that round, most definitely. One more round to go. It could all turn on a sixpence, but take us through this action now. Well, this is, the, this is the story of the fight for me so far. We saw some great top control from Steve Amable, and this is ability to just switch things up at the drop of a hat and take his man down. We see him already there trying to step through and lock in that arm triangle choke. He tried that one a couple of times, and again, Chase Morton attacks with a standing guillotine. Amable switches the game, puts his man on his back, and that's a dominant round on my scorecard for Steve Amable. Perhaps two rounds up here, perhaps maybe a round and a half, who knows? We've got five minutes though left and it's all to play for. That was definitely the most dominant round for me by Steve. You know, the first round was a little bit touch and go and close, but that way he definitely put a stamp on that one for me. Well, I'm sure as far as Chase Morton's concerned, there's everything still to play for. If he can end this before the bell, well, all to the good. If it goes the distance, he's going to have to put in a really convincing performance because we've got Steve Amable ahead on both cards. Right, we go into round three, three of a scheduled three. Chase Morton of the UK in the black gloves. Steve Amable. Again of the UK, this is an all-British affair at an event that is the UK versus the world. And we go to the third and final round here, the last five minutes. Oh, another nice combination there from Chase Morton. We saw Steve Amable start to work the jab briefly there, but Morton just a rangier, slicker striker. Big knee and another huge takedown. Yeah, I was just literally about to say I would like to see Chase go for a few knees down the middle, but... He just got read time perfectly by Steve, and yet again, he sends Chase crash into the map. Steve Amable already looking to fish out that arm triangle choke. He'll need to pull his rear leg through and step over into side control when he's locked it in. In the meantime, it's just a really uncomfortable position for Chase Morton to be in. It's affecting his breathing. He's not able to score effectively from here, and it's difficult to sweep. Really is a no-win for Chase Morton. It's been the story of this fight at the moment, you know, Chase being on his back. He's had the most success when he's been on his feet, been a bit more elusive uh, with the straight stri uh, strikes, Lee hitting ones and twos, uh, and a few good high kicks as well. But as soon as... The He's a little bit too much, too hot for Steve. He, yeah, again, he just finds somewhere, get hold of Chase, and just sends it to the canvas. Yeah, Morton looking to slap, snap a two-fight losing streak here. 
And we're getting to that point in the fight now where you think maybe it's time to go for one of those low percentage moves. Let's try the flying knee. Let's try the spinning back kick. Anything that works, but of course, he's going to get back to his feet first. Well, at this stage now, Morton can throw anything into the mix because it's really heavily against him, I have to say. I think the injury and uh, the repeated body slams that we've seen. But just look at those legs go up. Now, maybe you'll get some purchase here. If aimable, just is a little bit slack on the job, makes a mistake. Well, as I've said before, it could all change on a sixpence. Well, Chase Morton's one of those guys that looks like he could end any fight at any point. He's got a, a lot of snap in his punches and kicks, and we see the legs going up really fast as well. He's obviously got, the, he's got those nice long legs. It's conducive to throwing up triangle chokes and arm bars. Referee Mark Goddard, though, summons both men back to their feet. Are we going to see a final shootout here? Morton throwing punches on the back foot. This is the window of opportunity for Chase Morton. He's got to keep it in the upright. He's got to try and work the kicks in the hands. But of course, Aimable is just not going to allow that. He's going to close the distance and try and get his man back down onto the canvas. It's the ground game for Aimable that's just worked so well for him this far. And, you know, I have to say, even though he's trying to apply that guillotine from that stop to that top standing position, look at that. Aimable just slips out of it. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears going on in that ring. Not enough to get enough grip. Not enough to get some purchase there to make it work. We need some space from Morton and we need to see some of those strikes fly. But Chase is doing the right thing here, trying to work those underhooks, trying to be a break off and maybe get some knees in. But obviously, Steve has got a real good, great gable grip here, you know, a tight body lock. An aimable grimace there. I don't know if perhaps one of those shots landed slightly low, unintentional. I'm sure if it did. Aimable, though, not complaining to the referee. Staying busy. So one minute and a half left in this round and a great connection there from Morton as he powers in those punches. We're seeing some great hands here and the knee strike. Aimable's just taking his eye off the ball at the moment. Morton moving well. That's what he needs, the fluidity to get around the ring and create space and punish Aimable at distance. Oh, both guys swinging for the fences here. Aimable slung that right hand and we saw a nice push kick to the body. Morton trying to get loose here, trying to dance around this man. Aimable keeping up the pressure. This is some very great action here from, from both fighters, you know, making this fight very exciting, leaving it right to the end. Chase don't want to leave this to go to the judges. And, and also Steve Edible giving credit, he's coming forward, being very aggressive still. Aimable took the opportunity to close it down, take his man to the mat. As far as I'm concerned, Morton missed a huge, huge opportunity there. He was on his toes, he was moving around the ring. He should have picked Aimable off at distance, landed in shots, and then maybe taken an opportunity to hurt Aimable, slow him down before going to the ground. But Aimable's been dictating this. He's been in the driver's seat the whole fight. I mean, really on points, and as far as action is concerned, you know, Aimable could cruise this all the way here. We got, well, less than 15 seconds left. We're on the 10 second clapper. I don't think we're gonna see anything that's gonna be meaningful before the bell goes, but gentlemen, what yeah. credit to Chase Morton. He's still fighting. He's still trying to get out of this p position with just Stop. seconds to go. Aimable ends up on top, as we kind of expected he would. But what a brave performance from Chase Morton. That did not stop fighting until the final bell. I think it was the spatial awareness that Chase needed to be a bit more aware of. He was getting caught into the corners and couldn't really evade the, the takedowns from Steve when he was coming forward. Well, as I said, there was a lot of blood, sweat and tears literally in that ring. I think Morton missed opportunities. Aimable took them and, well, take us through this, Brad. Well, we're seeing some action there from that third and final round. And, and again, the real story of the fight in terms of technical stand-up exchanges, it was all Chase Morton. Steve Aimable, though, able to implement his game plan more regularly and more forcefully. He landed those takedowns. He had strong, long periods of control from top position. So that's how the judges' scoring will be weighted. They'll favor the grappling, given that it was more of a grappling fight than a stand-up fight. And although Chase Morton did land perhaps the more impactful blows, you've got to think this one is Steve Aimable's. He did look very impressive at this way as well, moving up. He, did, he showed that he didn't see any any effect of the power. He, he got the takedowns. He looked very strong for this way. He has a great physique. You know, give the guy credit. Well, we await the official decision. It's going to be no surprise a good fight. to everyone watching, but it was a brilliant, brilliant run out for both fighters, but there can only be one.
Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards and we have a unanimous decision in favour of your winner, Steve Amable. So Amable, well, no surprises to the commentary team here, has done it, but uh, Morton had opportunities, I think, and as I've said and expressed countless times throughout the bout, I think